Yellow alert. Energize defense fields. We're in the Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle, three Sierra Juliet, right turn on course approved. Wind 29012, runway 28 left, clear for takeoff, no delay, traffic to caravan on a two and a half mile final. Expediting 28 left, uh, three Sierra Juliet, right turn out. All right, time, check. Extras up, transponder check, traffic check. Back by 7702, traffic to Golden Eagle departing, you can plan on the 180 back taxi. We're blowing out of here. Right. Full power, everything looks good. Sounds good. I'm watching the shade for the fuel flow. They're good. The gauges are got problem. All right, airspeed alive, 80 already. I'm ready to go back. Traffic to Golden Eagle. 90. Left. We'll be five. Northbound. Hey, take it back. We're looking. And we're gonna start our right turn early. Pitch for blue line. Right turn out. Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. Golden Eagle 3 Sierra Juliet, maintain out or below 1,500 for traffic, radar contact, sales. Okay, we're uh, Ju 3 Sierra Juliet leaving just about 600 and we'll stop at 1,500 for now. We're 3 Sierra Juliet, traffic 12 o'clock, one mile, northwest bound, skyline 2,000. Okay, looking for the 2,000 traffic, uh, 3 Sierra Juliet. All right, we're going to set the... Uh, and we're 3 Sierra Juliet, uh, you can maintain VFR out of below 2,500 now, traffic's no factor. 2,500 now, 3 Sierra Juliet. All right, let's stop it at 2,500 on the pre-select. 7,700, cross runway 28. All right, there's oh, our... Uh, and taxi, Bravo, run to the ramp. To so slowly Bravo, take the power back. Back to 7,700. We're going 32 and a half. 32 and a half. 180 back to the ramp with me. 180 back to 1,900 RPM. There's We're 82 back, contact NorCal, departure 135.1. Hey, pick it back, 135.1. So that gives me a tip off. Golden Eagle, 3 Sierra Juliet, contact NorCal, departure 135.1, good flight. 35.1, thanks a lot, the 3 Sierra Juliet, talk to you next time. NorCal, 3 Sierra Juliet, uh, restricted 2,500. November 5, 3 Sierra Juliet, NorCal, departure, resume on navigation, appropriate for your altitudes, what's your requested altitude? 3 Sierra Juliet, request Bravo clearance 5,500. November 3 Sierra Juliet, it's approved as requested to the Bravo. Okay, Bravo clearance 5,500, 3 Sierra Juliet. Okay, so now we're going to set the pre-select to 5,500 and arm it. We'll start the... Uh, so we're going to do power settings of 24 gallons an hour. That's based upon RAM. I got the little sheet here from RAM that tells you what you should be doing at uh, certain power settings. And everybody says, do what Ram says. I'm leaving in the takeoff and landing, but here's the 414, and we're going to now compare to the 421. Here's a picture of a 421C model. This plane climbs a lot better than the 414 because it has... 375 horsepower engines per side, 90-inch propellers instead of 72 or 74-inch for the 414s, and they're also geared, so we're using 1,900 RPMs makes it much quieter. This plane also has engine monitors over here. You can see each cylinder is monitored and the TIT, the turbo inlet temperature. Three Sierra Juliet, back to the Bravo airspace, contact Travis, 119.9, enjoy your flight, Jerry. Hey, thanks a lot, we'll talk to you next time. Going, I'm enjoying it a lot, going to Travis, 19.9, thanks. Golden Eagle, 5 and 3 Sierra Juliet, checking in, leveling off here. 5,600, we're gonna go down to 5,500. November 513, Sierra Juliet, Travis approach, the Travis altimeter 2987. 2987. Okay, so the you know some some people are saying what's the difference in the cruise speed between the 414 and the 421? We'll back up a little bit. Um, my 414, I love it. It's a great plane. If it had ice, if it had ice protection, boots, uh, it had prop and prop zero seven seven prop heat. If it had wing boots, even the oh gosh boots, uh, I probably would not have sold it. But it didn't. So this plane has no ice. Heated windshield, uh, boots all the way around, uh, heated stall vane, uh, twin pedos, some other things that I'm that 
to escape me. To escape me right now. Uh, but somebody said, what about, okay, so I, this, the 414 was insured for six passengers. It held seven with the potty, um, a belted potty. Um, it weighed, at gross weight, 6,340 pounds. So 6,340 pounds was the total gross weight for the 414. And you couldn't put like 160 gallons and, you know, four people. It'd just kind of be over gross. This plane, the 421C, the C model started in 76, went to 82. It, um, its gross weight is 7,500. And it's uh, rated for eight passengers. Seven seats and um, the belted potty, again, for the eight. I don't foresee, you know, taking eight people in this plane, but uh, four guys and four golf bags? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on his feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. So, you know, some say, what about the speed? How's the speed... Um, match up. Well, the the plane works best in the flight levels, you know, which is above 18,000. So let's say like 20,000 feet. The 414 would true out around 200 knots. And at 20,000 feet, um, the 421 trues out at 224. Now, if you push the, the 421 up to 25,000 feet, you true out at 236. And that's a pretty good, you know, 25, 24, 25,000, depending on direction of flight. That's a pretty uh, good altitude to fly in. You know, like they say, you're uh, below the jetliners, below the commercial air traffic, and above, you know, the smaller guys. Do have the radar altimeter. Without having it audibly wired into the uh, audio panel, it doesn't do a whole lot of good because, you, you know, it's way down here on the left. And if you're doing an approach, you know, you're, you you want to listen for the tone or listen for the minimums, which the G600 gives. You can't be looking down at the light to come on. Oh, hey, I'm at minimums. The light's on. And, you know, you don't see the runway. The autopilot on this 421... Uh, the one difference that it has, it's a KFC 200. It's still an analog autopilot. It does have the GAD 43, which translates the digital of the G600 to analog so that it can get its um, autopilot references from the AHARS uh, altitude heading reference system on the uh, G600 instead of from the um, vacuum operated attitude indicators on the co-pilot side. So that's the difference with that. And the autopilot difference is I had a 400A in the 414. The only difference is you can't get pre-select altitude. And I, I really I really like it when you can um, put your altitude in and then just fly to it and the plane will level off. Same with, same with descending. I have two 750s, uh, GTN 750s, the 414 had one, and sometimes I think that I have a little, you know, over, over glass between the Garmin Pilot, this map, this map, traffic, terrain. Uh, on the G600, I kind of like, uh, you know, the terrain map, but what good's a terrain map when you're uh, in, a, in a, you know, pressurized airplane, you're going to be at altitude. So speaking of pressurization, on the left side, you can't see it. There's 4.2 4. differential is the 414 for pressurization, and the 421, it's 5.0. So you get a little bit better pressurization system. But uh, I had the 414 at 24,000 feet. You got a really comfortable cabin. Air conditioning on the 421 is engine-driven. It's, it's a uh, little bit more robust. You get it in the back of the cabin through the overhead vents where on the 414 it had the uh, the electric uh, Keith air that came right from behind the pilot's head and, and then back into the cabin. 
this keeps it you know a little bit cooler I do have a yaw dampener didn't have the yaw dampener before Three Sierra Julia, contact NorCal approach on 127.4. 2743 Sierra Julia, thanks, Antoine. NorCal, Golden Eagle 513 Sierra Julia, checking in 5500. Roper 33, reduce speed to 2309, if able. All right. Number 513 Sierra Julia, NorCal, approach altimeter 29885. I'm showing you for Auburn, is that correct? That's correct for Auburn. Sorry, step down. I didn't hear the uh, UHF guy call you back. Yeah, no problem. Now, I don't know if any of you have headsets on. You'll probably hear the controller in the left ear and this in the right ear. That's the 3D audio. I also have spoilers, uh, speed brakes. Here's one of the speed brakes on the left side, fully deployed. They're on both sides of the aircraft. That can be deployed at at any uh, speed on uh, this 421. Same heater system. I do have uh, cigarette lighters. Let's call them power outlets in the back. 112 volt, 124 volt. In the 12 volt one, I have plugged in a thermoelectric cooler to keep cold drinks in, and it uh, works really nice. So it's uh, like a little little cooler in there. So, like I said, uh, one thing you have to do on this plane, you got to baby the engines. That's for sure, because they're geared engines. Main thing is you don't let the props drive the engines because of the way the gearing is, you want it to be like a one-way, like a one-way street. This shows these big 90-inch props, and the 421 is instantly distinguishable from a 414. As you can see, that hump is the gearbox, which is part of the engine that drives the propeller. So you have to baby the engines a little bit, a lot of bit. And uh, resume normal speed, and uh, I'll have to meet the tower here in a moment. And your idle is at 900 five eight, Papa, looking for another on the idle. ground. Five eight, five eight, Papa. Five eight, Papa, and you reduce power zero. slowly. You know, I've always, for 25 years in Twin Cessnas, two inches every two minutes. A lot of, you know, some people will say that that's uh, a myth about shock cooling, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going back an inch a minute, two inches every two minutes, or just gradually. And usually 10 minutes out is your key to start. I want to put the VNAV in for Auburn so we can plan to be at 2,500 feet, three miles away. And let's see what kind of, uh, so it wants 200 foot a minute uh, vertical speed. So I'm going to turn the autopilot altitude hold off and just put the nose down, see if we can get that 200. Now if you look at the G600 here, you'll see uh, uh, the carrot for the VNAV and then next to it is a reference for your vertical speed. So if you stick the bug, it's a vertical speed bug, so if you stick that in there, it will keep you on that on that VNAV. So we're 55 degrees here, 610 in the afternoon, headwind of 7 knots. Our true airspeed 195, ground speed 190. I got the traffic screen up here with the uh, two mile ring. Let's go to the uh, six, four mile ring. This is put up with the, this is put up with the squelch for right now. Another difference with the 421, it's the same as the 414A, not the uh, straight 414, is you can put the gear down at um, 176. you got to plan out, you know, like I said earlier. You can't do the old, you know, Jerry Short approach. Uh, I, I might get to that sometime, but you should, you should do the old Short approach, and uh, you got to you got to plan ahead, get on your final speeds on base and, and final, use the spoilers, don't use the props, you don't have to.
That noise you heard, that doo 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 doo. doo. Really traffic control clock in five miles off the direction, a uh, Meridian descending at 8,000 for 6,000. All right, uh, 3 0 Jill looking for the traffic. All right, so he's 8,000, so he's above my uh, 2,500. Traffic screen. That do 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 you heard. That's a collision alert. The computer figures out that two planes are on a collision course and uh, warns the controller. Three, three, four, five miles from final approach fix. Turn left heading zero one zero. Maintain out above two thousand until established on a localizer. Cleared localizer. Three, four, so don't get me wrong. I like to go fast, and you know I will fly this plane at seventy five percent a lot, but you know you don't have to. And so let's set this up for 2,500 and arm it on the pre-select. That's uh, one of my favorite uh, features. And yeah, it uses more gas. It goes faster, it's bigger, it's heavier. It's a bigger cabin. It feels like a bigger cabin. Yeah, permanent. Yeah, I don't have those tanks on the wings, but, you know, okay, so he just popped up. It's 8 kilo golf. He's just going over the top of me at 2,500. I can't see him, but he's no factor. Oh, I'm getting static on that one now. Oh, 238s and uh, T-38s at Mather. 12065 is Mather. So I back up the uh, pre-select with the G-600. Now, if I had the GAD 43E, I could set the vertical speed, want it. I'm more than a thousand now. I could do the vertical speed, and I could also do the pre-select on the G600 and the GPS. will pass overhead. They're three miles southeast your position, a thousand feet above. Three zero dual looking for the traffic. So here he is. Here, this is at uh, T38, 13 above me. 1300. I don't see him, but he's he's got to be fast. Yeah, see, I'm not. You're not getting any info on him because he's military. Should be getting uh, Squawk 1200 any any minute now. There he is, T38. Oh, very cool. Very cool. You won't be able to see him. I'm dead sexy. Ooh. Number three, Sierra Julia, traffic no factor. Squawk via Fortune should buy your previous crash and water in the vicinity of Auburn. Okay, three, Sierra Julia, we'll look for that traffic. We're squawking 1200. We'll talk to you next time. Come on. Bye-bye. Auburn area traffic, Golden Eagle, five and three, Sierra Julia. It is one, one miles to the south, leveling off 2,500 for full stop, Auburn. Let's hear the wind again. He's full stop, so if he's out of the way, we might go. Municipal Airport, automated weather observation, zero, one, two, zero, Zulu. Wind, variable, at five knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. All right, so we're going to use seven. Clear. Variable is five. Traffic inbound, Auburn. Uh, what's your position now? Auburn traffic, this is one for us. Help out clear. Two, five, Auburn. Upper traffic, Golden Eagle 5 and 3, Sierra Juliet, 8 south, 2,500, going to cross overhead, make left traffic for runway 7, full stop, Auburn. Auburn traffic, Cherokee 33001, taking runway 25 for straight out departure, Auburn. All right, so he's taking 25. All right, so that's about the right way to cool an engine off here, down to 21 inches of manifold pressure. So we're dogging it pretty good. We're only doing 140 knots, so I'll hold on to the gear. We're going to watch for the traffic there. I'm watching the uh, Garmin pilot to see if that Cherokee gets up wind. Upper traffic, Cherokee 33001 is going to return to the run-up, uh, exiting uh, runway 25, Auburn. Auburn traffic, Golden Eagle 5 and 3, Sierra Juliet 5 South. Going to cross overhead land, uh, left traffic on runway 7, full stop, Auburn. All right, gas, check. We're on the mains. So we can use the Papa Gumps here.
Pressurization, check. Air conditioning off, check. Prop sink off, check. Auxiliary pumps on, that's the pop apart. And then the gumps is gas, undercarriage, mixture props. And speed brakes and speed. I'm going to travel Golden Eagle, 5130, Julia, 3 to the south, going to cross overhead, make left traffic, runway 7, full stop, Robert. So we'll put the gear down at the downwind. I don't mind putting the first notch of flaps in now. But we are going to go, uh, since we got a short runway here at Auburn, you know, 37-something, 3,500-something, we're going to do... Um, hey, Golden Eagle, uh, this is Piper 300. Three three eight zero zero one. We're holding short runway two five. Uh, what's your current location? We're just over the pond here, a mile south. Going to make left traffic for seven for a full stop, uh, Golden Eagle. Any chance we can squeeze out before you come in, so to speak? Say it again. Any chance we can squeak out a quick departure here before you guys come in and land? Go go go! I'll extend the downwind some. Copy. We are rolling runway two five at Auburn three three zero zero one. Thanks. Distance from Orion. 4,000 kilometers. We're not going to make it, are we? All right, so he's going to take off. So what the heck? Let's uh, let's drop the gear a little early, so we'll slow down. Gas, check undercarriage coming down. There's the red in transit. And the three greens, one, two, and three. Mixture is up. Some say, I say, the best place to cross overhead an airport is right above it at uh, pattern or 25 or five above it. I'm going to travel Golden Eagle 5 and Sierra, Sierra Juliet making a left, wide left uh, downwind turn for runway 7. Going to extend for the Cherokee full stop, Auburn. Cherokee, I see you upwind over the numbers there. Are you going to do the usual noise abatement, a little left turn out? Yeah, we're starting out right now. Okay, great. Thanks. So we're midfield left downwind for runway 7. I'm looking. I see somebody else at 25. Who's there at 25 waiting to uh, take off? Hotel Papa standing by at 25. Okay, great, because I'm going to be landing runway 7, Golden Eagle. I'll stand by and hold for you. Thank you. All right, we're a little low here. Add a little power. Are you going to need to come off at the very end, or will you come off sooner than that? No, I'll get off of Bravo. You're fine where you're at, the, where you're at for Golden Eagle. Thank you. I'm going to travel Golden Eagle, 513 Sierra Juliet, left base over Highway 49 for runway 7. Full stop, Auburn. All right, there's blue line, which is perfect on base. That's good. And then let's go ahead and drop all the flaps. I'm a Trapper Golden Eagle, 513 Sierra Juliet, turning final, runway 7, short final, full stop, Auburn. All right, nice and slow. Power back to 17 is about it. We're going to add a little speed brakes here to slow down. Thanks for waiting. I'm a traffic Golden Eagle 513 Sierra Juliet cleared of uh, 725 going to parking lot. So that was it. Nice uh, ride. Thanks for riding along. Five. Is it worth it? I mean, you've won. Do you want to wipe everybody out? I don't feel I have to wipe everybody out, Tom. It's just my enemies. That's all.